couple of weeks ago, I did a shoot for a client. They are a local fabric manufacturing company right here in Ghana called GTP. The shoot was done over two days and um, I happened to film the behind the scenes, but what I want to do is just show you one particular lighting setup that I feel really, really helped with what happened on day one, right? Even though it was a two day shoot, we were shooting photos and videos the same day. And so that meant that we had to be shooting very, very quickly. And so I didn't want to have a lighting setup where I feel would really make me have to think and, you know, really be critical in terms of positioning all the time because setting up your lights in different locations every time takes a lot of time. And because we're shooting quite a number of things, I also felt that if I was spending a lot of time figuring out my lighting, then it meant that I will not be working very, very efficiently or effectively. So this just made me have a plan in terms of lighting that would really make me work faster and also just give me flattering lights in under two minutes right because i didn't want to spend a lot of time figuring out what's working and what's not and i just want to show you how quickly i was able to use a three light setup to get really amazing results so when we went outdoors there was this particular part of where we were that was under an open sky it was hazy because i think hamatan was really really up for us that day and so the clouds were just pure white and we had shot a lot during the day earlier in the apartments and other parts of the outdoors um, that we were at and time was going so that meant that I really had to work fast and make sure that I'm able to capture as many images as possible within a short time because remember I said that we we're doing photos and videos at the same time and so that meant that I didn't really have a lot of time to waste now it's also good when you're doing productions like this to have you know assistants handy people around because just imagine that you're doing this by yourself and you're going to you know set up a light come back and take a test shot and figure out if the position is good if it's not you now have to walk back to the light and adjust it and that fine tuning takes a lot of time and it will also make you come across as someone who isn't an efficient photographer it's also going to make you come across as someone who's unprofessional so you need a team and you need a reliable team you need people that you've probably worked with a couple of times or if you haven't you know just people who understand the craft so that if you're just giving them directions it's easy for them to follow but the trick here is my lighting setup. I feel like I was able to use a lighting setup that made me work relatively faster. So even though I did a total of three lights, the modifiers that I used, I feel were just as handy because one, I use a, a shoot through umbrella, which is very easy to set up. And then I use my deep cone. And now deep cone is something that I've really come to love. And it's just this modifier that gives me a very good quality of light so now because we're shooting outdoors obviously i wanted there to be some dimension in the shot i wanted there to be you know a very directional kind of light and the deep cone is what gave me that and the deep cone i love because it can give you two kinds of uh light qualities so if you use it without the diffusion sock on there you can get this very harsh punchy light source and then your shadows will be very deep and contrasty or you can add the diffusion sock on there just to take that shine that reflective nature off a little bit and i also like the deep cone because it tends to increase the output of your light and so when i'm using something like that i don't have to stress my strobes so much now the trick here is also that i'm mixing a hard and soft light and so when the deep cone defined my subject i then use the shoot through umbrella to soften the shadows and it just give me an even illumination from top to bottom remember it's a deep focus reflector the main light right it's the deep focus reflector so it means that it's focusing the light in a specific area and so you may not be able to get even illumination from top to bottom so this is where the second light comes in and then just blends everything together and gives that very beautiful quality of light that you can't get just by using one modifier now to further enhance the shots i felt like even though the sky was plain the hamatan was really for us and so the sky was pretty much gray and i knew that i wanted to add a bit of detail in there just to add depth later on and so i decided to add an edge light now what i feel I should have done to the edge light was probably just warm it up a little bit because the sky like later on when we got some details in the sky um, I mean I couldn't have gotten with my normal camera exposure because that meant that I would really darken down the ambience and it would look 
too artificial and once i'm doing outdoor shots and we have a little bit of available light i always try to include that in my shots and so i didn't want the lights to really overpower the ambient light but i still wanted to have a bit more control over what i have so i didn't really care that the sky was blown out i didn't care that the sky had no detail in there because i knew that after the shoot i was just going to crank my shutter up some more and then take pictures of the sky so that in post i can actually fill in and then bring some detail back so that is what we're going to look at right now i'm going to jump onto my screen so i'll show you some of the raw files that i captured and how adding the sky just enhanced the shot so now jumping onto my screen you can see that we have this light source clearly in the shot but in the edited image i've gotten rid of it also if you look at the sky there's no detail it's gray and this is a picture of some of the skies that i took knowing that i was going to insert those into the image right so over here you can see that there is a little bit of detailed sky in there and obviously i didn't want the sky to be as prominent as this you know because it's not really going to match the natural feel of the image that was captured but obviously if you look at the edited image it is more believable this way and this is also another favorite that i captured but you can see that there's someone holding the fabric you know but nowadays photoshop is so intelligent it's just easy for you to remove those kinds of things and i also expanded the background just a little bit and also if you look at the raw file the sky obviously has no detail in there even if i decide probably let me see if i can go into um exposure maybe increase the contrast go into high dynamic range bring the highlights down you can see that there is no detail in the sky even if i'm underexposing to see if i can pick something out there really is nothing in the sky so it means the only way i could have been able to get um you know some detail in the sky will just be to do a total sky replacement and that is what i did all right so this is also like one of my favorite shots i really really love this but then again sky is playing no detail in there but in editing I just put the sky back in there now we also turn to another area and I still use the same lighting setup for that so I had the deep cone and then I had the umbrella filling in and that just gave us this beautiful beautiful lighting on them and it's it's so amazing how this lighting setup works amazing able to get very beautiful illumination from top to bottom you have some definition in there and it's not really overpowering but as you can see i added a sky in here as well and it's just absolutely amazing so that is all that i wanted to show you guys in today's video let me know what you thought about it and um, do you also mix hard and soft light sources do you want videos like this let me know all your questions down below i will be sure to answer them and um, yeah catch you guys in the next video i remember don't ever give up